This part is great. This is in a question and answer session after a lecture where Neville talks about someone who died and he can actually see him in the parallel world. Um, it's really good. I just didn't, I wish it didn't end abruptly because I would have loved to her hear the rest of it, um, to have heard the rest of it. But it, it ends abruptly and I'm afraid it's probably lost. But what you can get out of this is really, really interesting if you listen to it. I doubt many people listen that far into his lectures to, to catch these golden bits. So I chop them out and I share them individually. Now, are there any questions, please? <laughs> any questions? Yes, sir. Well, to answer your question, I must just go back and explain it to those who are here for the first time. No, 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 no. I make the statement based upon my own experience that nothing dies. And that's not only true of man. It's true of the flowers, of the animal world, of the trees, of everything. Nothing dies. I am the god of the living, not of the dead. So nothing dies. The little flower that blooms once, blooms forever. It's renewed by the seed of contemplative thought. Well, I had a wonderful friend and secretary. He died suddenly at the age of 50 when I was out here. I then lived in New York City. He was born in Haverstraw, New York, which is upstate New York. He lived in Manhattan and took care of my books and took care of all of my business affairs. When I got a cable saying that he was dead, they found his body on the floor the next morning when they went to clean, and I must come back and take care of the funeral uh, affairs. So I went back. <clears throat> I have two sister-in-laws. My wife is one of three girls. The other two are pillars of the Episcopal Church. <clears throat> the older of the two <clears throat> lives in Summit, New Jersey. And she's always said to me, you know, I like you personally as a brother-in-law because you're kind to my sister and to your child. And for that, I like you. But I don't believe one word you talk about. That's not my God. I said, all right. She said, I don't believe in uh, immortality. Don't believe in survival. I said, you call yourself a Christian? She said, what has that to do with it? I said, don't you realize that the Christian foundation is the fatherhood of God, the brotherhood of man, and life everlasting. <clears throat> you rub out one of these and it's going to collapse. No, she didn't say a word. She still don't believe what you teach. Certainly all right. Well, he died in August. I went back and took care of the funeral. In the next year, I presume around January or February, I found myself consciously in that world where Jack is. I do it time and time again. This does not restrain me. I can put it on a bed and find myself in another world. It is isn't there. It's right here. They're penetrating each other and yet not interfering with each other. And here is Jack. <clears throat> and here is my sister-in-law, Al. I call her Al. Her name is Alice. <clears throat> And I said, she said to me, I still don't believe what you teach, you know. I said, how can you say that when you see Jack? She said, what has Jack to do with it? I said, don't you know that Jack died? Jack then spoke to me, who's dead? I said, you aren't dead, Jack, but you died. I went to your funeral. I paid for it. I got your good Catholic funeral, Jack. Because your sister insisted that you must be given a nice Catholic funeral. I didn't cremate you. I put you in holy ground, Jack. I got a priest, and the priest did all the little uh, things he has to do, so you're very well planted. He just looked, he looked at me as the most, well, I mean,